welcome back to another uh, edition of More Than Our Bellies, Cooking with More Than Our Bellies. And tonight, I'm super excited. I have with me two very special ladies. Um, dear to my heart, I call them family, chosen family here. We have to my left here, yeah, this is my left, <laughs> Chris Reina. And Hi, to guys. my right, we have Melanie Monroe. <laughs> and tonight, we are, um, these ladies actually, I'm gonna play sous chef, mm -hmm. are gonna throw down and teach us how to make a homemade Caribbean um, meal. Chris will be in charge of the savory. savory. So Chris, what are you making tonight? I am making pollo guisado y un moro de guandules. I will show you how to make it with herbs that I love to use and as simple as I can make it. So homemade. homemade. And trust me, Melody and I were like, oh please, we'll Chris, can you just live with us so you can cook for us all the time? Because Aww. she makes the most delicious homemade meals. Yeah. Very yeah. authentic. And then Melody, what's I... up for the sweetness? So we're making a chocolate passion fruit layer cake. Yeah! <laughs> and the chocolate recipe is from your family, yes. right? So I was born and raised in Martinique and my grandma is a cook and a baker. And this recipe is like my family recipe and it was my birthday cake every single birthday. Oh. <laughs> Guys, so tears, tears. <laughs> Another fun fact is we've worked, worked, worked together. together. Yeah, yeah, they both graced my fashion shows, the runways. I remember doing your shows when we were younger. It was the show that every girl wanted to do. Fashion can has, can be tough yeah. and he has a very human way to treat his models. Yes, and Philip is such a successful designer and such a beautiful human being mm -hmm. that you know. I didn't pay them. I know, we didn't. <laughs> They're doing me a favor. Yes. <laughs> We've gotten to know each other like family here because mm -hmm. we're godparents. We're godparents and I'm the mama. <laughs> to her firstborn. I chose them for my special guest tonight because you know what I try to bring on to these episodes is introduce foods from different cultures. And since, you know, we're all actually immigrants um, and we're going to show you the most beautiful homemade uh, foods from different cultures. I'm so grateful to have both you guys here. So let's begin. We're using real passion fruits that Philip uh, got for me. And we're using this chocolate, which is my favorite brand of chocolate from Martinique. This chocolate in particular, and this chocolate cake, it just brings a lot of like memories to me. It's a cake that I always have for my birthday. My mom makes it all the time. Everyone in the family requests it. And I made it my mission to like perfect it and I finally did it. <laughs> so I'm really proud to be able to like make it for you and for you guys to learn how to make it. We're gonna start by melting the chocolate and the butter together. It asks for a lot of butter. You can't be shy with butter. This is not diet cooking. No, so you have to just like use all the butter, all the sugar. So we're gonna start by chopping the yeah. chocolate and the butter because we need to have it in like small pieces. Okay. Uh, so it melts faster. So Chris and I are gonna be Melody's sous chefs. Okay. This is 113 grams, so, so that's, two of these. That's you need enough? 260? 250. This is 226, 26. so I'm gonna do it just this yeah, much. that's that's enough. Okay. <laughs> Everything's instinctual. This like this to this is two hundred and twenty-six, and maybe a little two tablespoons. Yeah. You're not gonna die. And this is island style. So. Yeah, yeah. We're relaxed. Yeah. We're chill, you know? chill. Exactly. Hashtag chill. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually the way I cook too. It's yeah. really like every time I do a recipe, people are like, "Oh, what's the thing?" I'm like, "Oh, it's just a pinch. <laughs> it's just a dab." But I think I, it's from our parents though. Yeah, they don't measure no. it. It's like all to the eye, yeah. you know? They just it, know how much you, you put in, you know? We're gonna use a technique called Bamahi. Hot water will be warming up the pot and that's gonna melt the chocolate and the butter together so it doesn't burn in the bottom. We need 125 gram of sugar, but we need to make sure that the butter and the chocolate is perfectly melting together first. And I don't like my cakes to be too sweet because I'm gonna add sugar into the frosting. I'm gonna add sugar into the passion fruit. So I don't know, I don't want people to feel like they can't have another slice when they're eating my cake. So, so considerate of you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to eat more. <laughs> By the way, you have to use brown sugar because brown sugar was like one of the main industry in the Caribbean and mm -hmm. both for our island. So you gotta support our industry. And exactly. chocolate too. And chocolates. 
My other sous chef, Chris, Hi. is going to separate the eggs. We need six eggs. Mm -hmm. So we need to separate the white from the egg yolk. Wait for it to cool off a little bit because we're going to uh, incorporate the egg yolk into the chocolate and butter mixture. In the meantime, you can just butter your pan. I like to use this kind of pan because when you open it, it's a circle. So you can just kind of like take it out like beautifully. Oh. Another secret is this baking powder. It's, it's French. So we're gonna mix the flour and the Levure Chimique uh, baking powder. The amount of like flour that I use is not like perfect. I use like three tablespoons, like roughly. Typically you're supposed to take a knife and just like kind of like level it. And that's how you do it. Ooh, that was nice. And then then you should have that sound on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should just add a little bit more. Okay, just to see. The leveling. Level. One more time. <laughs> One more time. Level up. Level up. <laughs> level up. <laughs> level up. Level up. Level up. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> level up. Level up. You really don't put that much flour into it because the least flour you put, the more airy and light it's gonna be. Chris, would you mind holding this for me? Yes, of course. And then we're gonna mm, incorporate, and then you mix everything together. You're gonna beat the egg whites. So we're gonna use um, this amazing Crux Kitchen mm. Emulsion Blender. Oh, so nice. So you use both, like... <gasps> I love this. The way to like figure out if it's ready, it's just like, if you just like bring it up and it stays, then it's ready. Like. I personally like to use rum in everything I Ooh, We should bake. use rum. <laughs> so I have rum. I brought some too. Oh. <laughs> I brought a cute mini one from Martinique, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. Then you add a little bit of vanilla. I brought this from Martinique also. It's not the right uh, original bottle, but I got this from the market and I flew to New York with it. So I really care about good quality and like local ingredient. Supporting local businesses is like something that's really important to me. So, okay. all right, next step. Okay, you take a little bit of meringue. Uh, meringue and then you just kind of fold it. Oh God, that looks like a dream. I wish you guys can smell it. <laughs> so now we're gonna pour the batter into the cake, into the pan, sorry. Right. Try it. It's like milk chocolate. Yeah. Buttered milk chocolate. Mm, oh my god. Hold on, let's let her put. Oh yeah. Now we're gonna put it in here. Yes. So Wait. that's at 325. We're gonna bake. My name is Gris Ureña. I'm from the beautiful island, Dominican Republic, and I'm here to show you my version, the authentic version. This is gonna be a huge batch because a lot of people will be hungry. This is <laughs> 15 pounds of chicken. So let's get started. My secret ingredient that I use is grapefruit and lemon. The acidity, I think, goes really deep. It marinates better. That's yeah. my theory. Look at the like, color though. I know, it's really so beautiful. Gorgeous. Since I'm doing other dishes, the way I time it out, I marinate the chicken first. So then while I'm doing the rice, it's marinating. Here I have turmeric, cumin, oregano, adobo, and I added some garlic powder, but you can never have too much garlic. No, never. Never, never. And <laughs> never, never. <laughs> look how beautiful Melody got the garlic. I don't cook with a lot of salt, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. Sorry guys. Home cooking is about no measurements. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just mix it in there. I put in some parsley and cilantro. So as I always say with home cooking, you gotta get in there to get all the flavors marinated and fully covered. And I add a little bit of bell peppers that I will put in the end, but I just want the chicken to start everything. soaking everything. We have some hoisin sauce here that we're gonna put in. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a leg and then get in there. You don't want to waste. Wasting anything. Yeah. I have gloves on, by the way. And it's so important, guys, to clean and cook at the same time so that you're not uh, having food contamination. Cleanliness is godliness. I'm gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes. Do you think it's ready? I think so. 
Okay, the knife came back clean, so that means the cake is ready. To speed up the process, we're gonna put it in the freezer because we don't have all day. I am cutting the passion fruit. This one is a good one. Look how pretty it is. And you just kind of just separate the juice and the pulp from uh, the seeds. It's gonna be like a gelatin kind of like top layer. It's incredible, like as a vodka drink. Should I try? Yeah. We can use this. Try one with rum and one with vodka. We're gonna squeeze some lime juice. So we're gonna combine the lime juice with some sugar, brown sugar again. And then I'm gonna pour everything in it. Passion fruit rum cocktail. Actually, this is really delicious. Is it good? What does it taste like? Passion fruit and rum. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna start making the rice and pigeon peas. I'm gonna make six cups of rice. So you wanna get the pan pretty hot. I'm gonna use coconut oil because I'm gonna be using coconut milk. So it will complement each other. I wanna put like half an onion. This stuff is incredible. So I would use maybe a tablespoon of this. Add my garlic, two cans of pigeon peas, and you're gonna just like let this cook a bit so it absorbs all the taste of all the herbs that I have put in. I do like to add olives, Spanish olives. I hope people here love olives. I'm gonna put a little bit of coconut milk. I just eyeball everything. I taste and add as I go. While that is cooking, I'm going to rinse the rice. So also when do this, you can make them as basically like a stew, like how you have rice and beans and chicken on the side. You can also do that with um, wandules, pigeon peas. The English name is like not very pleasant. I'm gonna throw in the rice. So this is six cups of rice, guys. So we're gonna have leftovers for a very long time. People love to add the little packages, like the little sazon, but I just like to keep it super simple and use the ingredients that I have at home. So I just add turmeric. I put about one tablespoon. And that's how you make your rice have some color and flavor. It smells so, so delicious. We're starving. So soon enough, we'll be eating. Wait, I'm like, these sous chefs have been really quiet. <laughs> well, she's doing everything. She doesn't need her help she's right now. She's self-sufficient. Should I tell you guys to add the water again? <laughs> no. So I added six cups of water because the water is boiling. You don't need to add extra water because usually what happens is you add extra water because it evaporates. Well, in this case, you don't because it's already heated. In the Dominican Republic, it's a cultural thing to have kong kong. Kong kong is the sticky rice underneath the pan. You never throw it away and you always ask every family member before you do anything with it. And if you're Dominican, you know what I'm talking about. So what I like to do is add a little bunch of cilantro and parsley. And I kind of tie it around to keep it sort of together. And then you just throw it in. And it will be ready in 20 minutes. This is the kind of water that you need to wash your hair with. So if you leave this for, I think it's like 24 hours, then you can put it in your hair and this is how you get amazing glossy hair. So while this is cooking, I'm gonna start cooking the chicken and frying the plantains. <laughs> There's so much left to do. Grape seed oil, oil is, the, is best. the best. And you just want to make sure you put enough to cover the plantain. So you just want to add a couple. Whenever you go and pick out a plantain, if you want it tender and sweet, then you always search for the plantain that has the more like dark spots. And sometimes you can find them really inexpensive at like Whole Foods because they don't know. Yeah. But if you go to a Spanish uh, market, those are actually sometimes the most expensive because 
then you don't have to wait. If it's too thick and it's not ripe enough, you can just take something and smash it. That way it cooks thoroughly. So the way that you know is by, you see how this white, you can see that it's a little bit raw still. You can just throw it in. Delicious. But it's okay, we're gonna fix her. All right, so I'm gonna make the frosting because the cake is ready to be frosted. And I'm using one cup of very cold heavy cream, very important. And I'm using this whole pot of mascarpone. I don't think we're gonna need that much frosting, but it's better to have too much and not enough. I use this for every single one of my frosting and it makes it very light. And then we're gonna whisk this together. I'm melting um, chocolate with um, sugar from Melody to put in the mascarpone. Maybe you use it. <laughs> Baking is not a no. clean sport. You have to make sure that everything is smooth. Oh my god, it looks crazy. We'll, we'll fix it. You need to like cut it a little bit. Try it. <laughs> there are the crumbs. Alright, the cake. And then you start putting on your frosting. It's the most satisfying thing in the world. Look at this. Just put a, a good amount and then you just go like that. I'm gonna add some on the side. And you're gonna clean everything after, obviously. I didn't cut the cake in the middle. Is it too late to cut? It's supposed to be a layer cake. You need to cut the cake in half in order to make a layer cake. And I kind of forgot that. I don't know what happened, but we're going to fix that really quick. So it's going to get a little messy, but we're going to go in the middle and I'm going to cut it in half over here. The good part is that the abstract shape <laughs> allows it to really know where everything is going. <laughs> you know, guys, it's the rum, but also she is, actually we planned this because we planned this. more than our bellies is for amateurs, home cooks, <laughs> beginners, dabblers. Mm. And you know, you make mistakes, you live, you learn, and you make up for it and you're still delicious. <laughs> so I got passion fruit curd, to put in the layer just to add some, a kick or something. And you just feel like as you're eating each bite that you're just, Kind of discovering more taste. Some more frosting on the top. You see how easy it is to spread this thing? So we're gonna grab the top part. So, oh. <laughs> it's okay if it's messy, you can always clean up after. You just keep adding more frosting on the side. We're professional, but not that professional. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about making things look perfect on the first try. I feel like that's how I deal with a lot of things. I created a mess first and then I cleaned it. So I added agar agar. I'm just whisking it and then I have to put it back in the fridge. I don't like to have a lot of frosting, so like the cake part is apparent, but I like that style. It's called naked cake. So it's, it's like a trend thing. Check it out. <laughs> Let's check on the rice. Here you go. Where is the chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna take a piece and put it in the hot. Let it brown. This is messy. So we'll do two walks. Okay. Uh, do this side, you do that side. And just do the same thing? Yeah. Oil or anything? Oil. Okay. And like very, very hot. Let's save it. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is what happens when you cook with me. Shit happens. I'm just prepping little ideas for decoration. We have star fruits, another tropical fruit that I love. What is the, what is the poem? 
Starlight, star bright. I wish I may, I wish I might. I don't know the yeah. <laughs> Fashion fruit coolie. It's dripping everywhere. Cake by the sea. We're looking at um, starfish. Starfish here. We're looking at how um, the waves crash in and soften the sand and leaves it glistening. I love how you look. We are, <laughs> this is um, sand, sandstone um, softened by the ocean water over time. And All right. <laughs> So I added the bell peppers, bay leaf, and also some ginger roots. And then I'm going to cover it and lower the heat. Just turn it off. And while I set up my plates, then the bell peppers will cook. And it will be crunchy and tender. Tastes good, that's all that matters. Yes. Hi, I'm standing in for Chris. Because she is busy right now. She's over there. Hi. <laughs> Teamwork makes a dream work, folks. Okay, you guys ready? Are we ready? Side. Thank you for this amazing Caribbean spread. And what it was it that we made again today? Mm. I'm so busy taking a beer. Oh, we're gonna have a beer too. <laughs> we deserve it. We have here some plantains. They weren't really ripe because of the season, but they're very delicious. It's a little tangy and savory. We have avocado for you know the healthy fats. And then this is moro de guandule, very Dominican. And this is a braised chicken. It has the sauce and bell peppers, very colorful. And then right here we have our amazing baker. Chocolate and fashion for cake. Yay! Yay. <laughs> We're so excited and I hope you guys will take this home. And thank you for staying in tune with us. Yes. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Cooking, Enjoy. Moros de guandule. 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 Moros de guandule.